Hello and welcome to that British Home Said. Today I thought that I would go through all the seeds that you can grow and we can grow in July. So let's get started. Sadly not roses, but a little bit better. Right. So it's like this is the first month where instead of like every month I feel like I'm adding to this. I'm like, oh we can grow this, we can grow that. And this month is like the first time we're like, oh okay can't grow that anymore, can't grow that anymore, can't grow that anymore, etc. So it is, it's a little bit crazy. So let's have a look what we can actually grow. So first off, Rocket. Now you can grow Rocket all the way until September, which is exciting. It's like a, like a peppery sort of salad, really fantastic in sandwiches, I have to say. Next is Cress, you can grow this all year round though. Um, I really like Cress in um, like egg and Cress sandwiches. I really like sandwiches on the brain. Um, another thing is perennial spinach. This is growing really great at the moment. Uh, we love spinach. I really like sag paneer, which is like one of those spinach dishes that are just amazing, aren't they? I love it when you go down the Indian. So that's a nice one. Um, another lettuce here. Now you can grow this all the way up until August, which is nice. You get to, um, right the way up to November, you can get a harvest, which is exciting. It's got a crinkly leaf as well. Focus. It's got a crinkly leaf as well, which is a very nice sort of addition to a salad or a sandwich. <laughs> so another lettuce that I'm gonna grow, which I really enjoy, it's all year round. You can sow this all the way up until October, so you can have it all year round. Um, I like to have this in the, in the greenhouse for overwintering, it's really lovely. I've also got this one here, look how nice that is. It's a crinkly leaf. It's called Red Salad Bowl, so it'd be really nice. I like to have that sort of variety, and I think minerals and vitamins, there must be some more in there, which is really nice. You can do this all the way up into the end of the month, pardon me, so you can have a harvest all the way up to mid-October, which is exciting. Uh, these ones are radishes. You can grow your summer radishes all the way up to August. They take 30 days for a harvest, which is really good, because if you're sitting there like, oh, I wish I had to take harvest now, 30 days is ridiculous. Shiraz is a pea. I believe you can sow this, this is the last month you can sow this, sorry. Uh, so you can have a harvest in, I think it's about, one month okay so you'll get them around about august the end of august september all the way up to the frost you'll be getting a harvest of these these are petit pois meaning that you don't grow them for seeds you uh, from peas you grow them for the actual pod which is really nice and they're purple which makes them so much easier to find on the plant uh, next but not least um there's just a quick mention to the which ones are these? These are Sunshine, which are a French bean, which is really exciting that you can have one that you can sow all the way up, I believe until all, oh, September. See, so yeah, I'm, I'm completely lying, up until September, which is really good because we don't actually have our frost until quite late, but our days get really, really short. That's exciting. Next, we've got herbs. Now, I'm really feeling the herbs this month. Um, I'll tell you why. I had some really delicious pesto the other day and I really want to make loads of pesto. So it's exciting. We've got coriander. Coriander is one of our favourite herbs to have. We have it all the time. We want loads and loads of that dried. More coriander. Um, basil, like I said, pesto, really, really good. It could be good this year. We've got normal basil. We've got lemon basil. We've got red basil, which is called opal, I believe. We've got lemon basil again, obviously really, really liking the basil. We've also got dill, which is a really important harvest for us because of our pickles, which will be exciting. Um, parsley, parsley, we, we absolutely love pie and mash with parsley sauce, so that's an important one. And fennel, this is called dizivel. It's an aniseed flavor, I love aniseed onions we have deep purple which is a type of spring onion i love spring onion tops you know just thrown in everything we've just made some crab cakes with spring onions in them so that was lovely i've got some other ones called um northern holland blood red these are an exciting variety of red uh, spring onions so we've got purple and red um also i just thought this was amazing we've actually got two varieties of Mm, of leeks we can do which is very exciting these are late leeks so they are actually able to be harvested right up um, october november which is exciting so these are going to be fantastic varieties to have 
so that we can have um, them for stocks and stuff like that, which is really exciting. Um, we've also got a load of beetroot. I'm really excited about beetroot this year. I'm planning to put an entire strip bed of beetroot. One of my favourite ones is Cylindrica. Cylindrica is like a red beet, uh, which is like ball's blood, but it's a cylind cylindrical. It's a long, like a carrot, but thicker. I really like this for pickles because as you chop it up, you don't get like the small pieces of pickle, you get like the same size pickle throughout. So I'm gonna absolutely smash that this year. I might net it though, because I did put some baby beetroot in and I noticed that they were missing, so mm, suspicious. Um, we've got other ones like Border, which is an exciting variety. Avalanche, which is a white variety. Chicoria, which is a um, striped variety, like candied, like that one there. So like that one there, okay? So this is a rainbow variety that I got from Wilco's. I'm probably gonna fish off that pack. These can all be sown until the end of July, so it's like now or never sort of thing. And I believe you get them in around about October, which is perfect, because it's like after the tomato craziness, and I can just pickle and pickle and pickle and pickle. These are some uh, chicory. Chicory is really great. I'm gonna plant those out and force them over the um, next few months so that I have some nice fresh things um, in the winter without having to worry about lights and things like that. Now carrots and also something that we're going to be growing I've just put in two beds of carrots and fingers crossed they grow. I'm having just like the worst luck with carrots this year. I feel like I got really arrogant because last year I planted some carrots and I had like the whole lot come up and I was like, Pfft. I've struggled with back carrots for years. I'm obviously a genius. I can grow carrots now. Can I? No. I have had an entire bed of parsnips come up though. Which is strange, because I never get my parsnips come up. I normally do like a whole bed and get one parsnip, and now I've got every parsnip come up. So maybe it's like by annual, you know, like one year I can grow them, one year I can't. So if I get any carrots this year, I'm gonna like proper treasure them because not doing particularly very well with them. So I've got some brassicas. Some of these brassicas are quite surprising that you can still sow them. Just quick disclaimer, I actually have some spring cabbages coming, which are Greyhound, April, and a round one that I cannot remember. Um, I'm just getting them seeds in the next few days, and you can sow those right up into, I believe, August, and then you can plant them out for the winter garden. You must cover them up though, because I'm telling you right now, the pigeons absolutely adore them. So I've got Calabrese, which is the broccoli that you get in the shops. So that's gonna be an exciting one if that works out. Um, we've got Kohlrab, which is a more bitter variety of um, broccoli. This one's called 60 Days, it's ready in 60 days. They're better to kind of sow directly because they, they're so fast that by the time you've got little starts, they're ready to harvest. So it's better to put them straight out. Um, I've got pak choy. Pak choy is a really exciting one. You can even have these as a baby variety. You can actually sow these all the way until mid-August. Um, so you can have them right up until December. It's really lovely to have these because um, they do st stay in the ground in the winter really well, but they do bolt in the spring. So as soon as it starts warming up, they bolt. Best have those in the greenhouse if you're gonna go ahead and keep them over winter. I find that really great. We've also got some other varieties. So those were Hananan and Ruby. Ruby works better. You get that better color um, when it's colder outside, just FYI. Um, next one, Chinese cabbage. Chinese cabbage is a really lovely variety. This one is called Wong Bok. Um, I really want some good Chinese cabbages and I've failed miserably with them so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and really heavily sow these probably tomorrow so that I have some so I can make some kimchi. This one is a kohlrabi. I love kohlrabi. So many of them in the garden already, but you know what, you can't have enough. And I really wanna make some coleslaw work with my cabbages. I've got two more cabbages to harvest tomorrow, which is very exciting. I've got some uh, yellow, uh, purple sprouting broccoli. You know what? I was so shocked that you could actually grow this so late because I was like, oh, I thought you only did it in like 
June, July, August. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant some more of this because then I'll have it staggered and I'll probably be sick of it next year, but I'll have absolutely loads of it, which is very exciting. The last but not least, I really like these. These are winter radishes and I've even overwintered these in the greenhouse before. Before you can sow them all up until August, they really overwinter well, they go absolutely massive. And I actually prefer them in the winter because they're actually not as spicy. It's when um, then in summer they get really really spicy and I don't particularly like that flavour. Last but not least, bum bum bum, is these flowers. So flowers are very exciting as you know. We've got forget me nots which some people call a weed. Um, I actually got a pack free which is the um, road safety forget me nots. I like forget me nots because my nan grew them and whenever I see them I think of her. Um, she used to have them like by a fence and she used to grow them and they used to do really well and they kind of creep and they're just great. They do spread though so bear that in mind. Larkspur which I've tried to grow for years now but you never know I might be lucky. Um, wallflowers which if you're in the UK you know a wallflower is someone who doesn't get asked to dance. <sighs> Memories, um, but I really like these. I think they're really pretty. I think they're lovely. So that'll be really exciting to have. They also could fit insects and things like that. And I want to bring as many insects into my garden as much as possible. These ones, foxglove. I've actually gone ahead and sprinkled some of them around. You can you can sow these all the way up into August, and they are absolutely lovely. I don't think, these are biannual, so they'll grow one year and flower the next, or I thought they were perennial for a second, crazy. But yeah, I just feel like this month is the first month that I'm like, nope, like this is the first month since January that I'm saying to myself, no, you can't, you can't sow that anymore, you can't sow that anymore, which is sad. But it's the way the world is. I feel like winter's drawing in already, which is ridiculous, I know, because we're not even had the summer yet, and I feel, like I'm so behind. Um, I feel like all of our harvests are kind of like really delayed. And I was thinking that this morning, I was like laying there like, mm, it's really delayed. However, I, I went back on the channel and I looked at like a year ago, I was looking at my tomato patch. And honestly, it's like, if you look at my tomato patch this year and look at my tomato patch last year and you can't tell the difference, I have to keep saying to myself, look, it's just summer, right? So what is it? So it's only the 22nd, which means it was only been a, it's only been summer for like one day. So I can't really be too hard on myself because if it wasn't for the fact, you know, that it, I can't be too hard on myself because it was the same last year and I got such an abundant harvest last year. I was actually like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with all of these tomatoes? I have, I have done really well. It's just, you know, like, it's the typical social media thing. I look at every other social media and I'm like, they have so many tomatoes. Why don't I have any tomatoes? And then you say like, oh, they're also in Australia. Okay, maybe, maybe that's why. Or, you know, like in the winter when you see someone what grow watermelon, you're like, why can't I grow watermelon now? And you're like, oh, they're in Australia or wherever. It's just, I've got the itchy feet. I really want to be like harvesting and storing, etc., which means you know it's the way it is. But I just want to make sure that I've got enough cabbages this year for winter. I've really enjoyed having my cabbages later, it like that I've sown earlier in the year and had later in the year. Oh, I just really hope that I'm able to do it. I'd be really excited. So yeah, I just needed to like keep mining goal and I really do feel that having those photos and videos and stuff to look back on is really beneficial because if not I'd get inside my own head and be like oh this year is ruined but it does mean that if you aren't already please make sure that you are taking photos of your allotment and your garden so that you have that for next year so when you get inside your own head you can be like oh what was I on about why was I so worried I really hope that we get a lot of tomatoes this year on the basis that I've only got a few jars of tomato left and that's not enough. I've been growing tomatoes for years. I've never bought any chopped tomatoes or anything from the, the shop since I've started growing them, even with six plants. So I'm hoping that's going to be a thing that turns into a reality. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I hope that you're having a really, really abundant year. Let us know down below if I'm the only one who's not getting a little bit nervous. And if you haven't done already, please consider subscribing because we're almost at a thousand subscribers, which is very exciting. But we can't do it without you. Yeah. <laughs>
So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Yes. Um, this is the one that I'm going to like double down on. I've had such bad luck with cabbages. Don't know why. It feels like with these ones in particular, I sew them and I sew them and I sew them and I sew them and I'm getting absolutely diddly back.